even though I've already mentioned that we might not be able to choose a basis for a manifold for the tangent space of a manifold at every point in a continuous manner, we can still do it at any point. Remember that any finite dimensional vector space, in fact any vector space at all, has a basis. And so what we can do is, if we've chosen a basis for the tangent space at a manifold, for a manifold at a particular point, we can make sense of the Jacobian of a differential with respect to that choice of basis for the domain of the differentiable function and for the codomain. But in order to make sense of this, I want to make sure that we understand the uh, linear algebra facts for what it means to uh, have a basis on a vector space. So we make um, the following definition, which might seem a little bit abstract and different than the way you've probably learned about it, but it's useful to think about it this way as well for easier proofs later on. So let me write this definition in terms of um, data and a construction. So suppose that you have two finite dimensional vector spaces W and V. Let's say finite dimensional vector spaces. And let V to W a linear transformation and also suppose we have an ordered basis ordered bases B and let's say the dimension of V is M of V and an ordered basis C of W. So here, you know, I'm not going to write this, but M is the dimension of V and N is the dimension of W. And this is all of the data that we need. When you can already see that this is a lot of information, which is why we typically don't like keeping track of all of this to write a Jacobian. Instead, we just have the differential and we have a linear transformation associated to it, we don't necessarily care about what the basis or what a basis could be. Um, but nevertheless, for computations, it's sometimes useful to have a basis. So the matrix associated, now we're getting to the part of the definition. This is just data, and this is now, you know, the definition. The matrix associated to V with respect to this data, so these data, so um, the bases B and C is the matrix, and let me underline this because this is where, what we're defining, is the matrix associated to the linear transformation which we denote by T B C and you'll see why we denote it like this in a moment and this is a linear transformation let me rewrite it actually here it's a linear transformation from R N to R M which is uniquely determined by commutativity of the following diagram. So what this diagram does is, I'm not even going to write it yet, I want you to think about what I could possibly think of writing. I have a transformation from W to V. I'm telling you that there's a construction from a vector space that has the same dimension as W to a vector space that has the same dimension as V, but these are very special vector spaces. These are specifically the Euclidean vector spaces. And associated to this choice of basis, I can send V1 to E1, the unit vector in Rm, and V2 to E2, and so on, Vm to Em. And similarly, I can do the same thing for the basis C for the vector space W. So the diagram here is 
we have our vector space V, we have our linear transformation T, W, and we have our choice of basis, and let me just call this phi subscript, um, let's see, it's C, and this is phi subscript B. And here this linear transformation is T, B, C. And we know what the, linear tr what the matrix is associated to any linear transformation between Euclidean spaces is. There we have a canonical basis, a canonical ordered basis, and we can write our matrix with respect to that one. So that's what we do whenever we write a matrix associated to two different bases on, a, on two different vector spaces we are secretly performing this procedure. So let me just define this where phi c of, let's see, wi equals ei. That's the definition of this. And phi c is defined on all other vectors. on all of W by linear extension, which means that for any vector, any vector is expressed as a linear combination of the Ws. And as a result, we can define what the image of that vector is under this linear transformation by pulling out the constant factors and just looking at what it does to this basis. So, so this is how we can write um, this, or explicitly IE, since these functions, since these linear transformations are invertible, we can write TBC is defined to be, take the inverse of this linear transformation, and that's the first one, so we put it on the right, composed with T, and then back down along this linear transformation. So this linear transformation is 1 from Rn to Rm, and we can make sense of the matrix there. So let me now explain why I chose um, this notation for the matrix, for the linear transformation um, associated to T with respect to a particular choice of basis. If we had three vector spaces, U, V, and W, and I had linear transformations S from V to W and T from W to V, and these vector spaces had a choice of a basis. So I had an A for a basis of U here, B for a basis, sorry, it's getting a little cluttered, of V here, and C for a choice of basis for W. Then I can look at, and here's the composition of S and T. Then choosing this basis in this manner actually allows us to construct another similar diagram Let's say it's, um, I'm changing the notation a little bit. So let me, let me write this as L, R, L, R, M, and R, K. Let's denote those as the um, dimensions of these vector spaces. Here, I'm going to have S, A, B. And here, I'll get the linear transformation B, T, C. And what do I get here? I also have, you know, for the composition of two linear transformations, I can perform the same procedure. I can ignore the fact that it was, it was coming from two different linear transformations. I would write S composed with T, and let me put a parenthesis just so we don't get confused, A, C. So I get a diagram like this, and the claim is that, and I'll leave you to prove this, this is a nice way to test your diagram, diagrammatic skills, uh, is that A S composed with T C is equal to A S B B T C. So the B's in the middle, you can think of them as sort of canceling. Um, and what we're doing is we're taking a sum over, when we do matrix multiplication, we're taking a sum over the basis B for the vector space Rm. And that's why I think this notation is a little bit um, not so bad.
So we can do this for the differential of any linear transformation, sorry, for any differentiable function between manifolds. So let n f be a differentiable function of manifolds, and let's say c is a point of n. Then we can take the differential of f at the point c. We can choose a basis for n and choose a basis for m in a similar way as we've done here. And then we can write the Jacobian associated to that choice of basis. So we can do this, and this is how we would do it if we wanted to.